Hello, I'm Sarah Howe. I'm tech support at Keith McMillan Instruments, and today I'm going to guide you through the basics of the soft step. When you first open the application, you'll see all of the keys arranged similarly to how they're arranged in the soft step itself, which you can see right here. You can also see the nav pad control, which is to the right of all of the keys, as seen here on the soft step. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is the sensor view. This is where you can see all of the five degrees of control in action. Pressure, XY, and counterclockwise and clockwise rotation. Now here on pad one, as you can see, I am moving my foot around on the soft step. Here is the live pressure and the location of my foot on the pad. Here you can see the rotation clockwise and counterclockwise of my foot around the dial. The X and Y latch, when I take my foot off, it stays where I left it, and so does the pressure latch. And here on the XY ink and deck, I can slide the yellow and green balls up and down and side to side. And here is the foot on and foot off. And all of these sources are available for you to edit the settings of here in the settings window. The settings window is where you can alter the sensitivity settings for the keys and the nav pad on the soft step. So you can make them all as sensitive as you would like to. You can also set up some MIDI input for use with the soft step MIDI expander and an OSC output and calibrate an expression pedal in the same window. So once you've edited the settings and have everything how you want them, now you'll want to control the mappings of each key by accessing the key's modulation window. Here's key one's modulation window. Here you can select any of the sources that we previously saw in the sensor view. You can select them here in the sources and you'll see the raw data coming in. This is pressure live, so I'm currently so I'm currently seeing the non-latching pressure data. Here I can also set up a gain and offset and further alter it through a table, a minimum and maximum, and a slew. Now here's the important part where I set up a parameter destination to go to control a MIDI device. I can select note, CC, bank, program change, OSC, pitch bend, MIDI machine control, aftertouch, and poly aftertouch. Now if I select one, I'm going to choose CC, control change. I'm going to put the control number at 7 and keep the channel at 1. And I'm going to send it out to the IAC driver bus. And now you'll see the output going to that device, the IAC driver bus on control channel 7. So I can send that into live or anything. Another cool thing you can do from here is set up LED state information for this key. I'm going to set my green LED to true and red LED to false, which means whenever I put pressure on the key, it'll turn green, and then when I take it off, it's red. Okay, so I'm going to put those back, and then you can also set up the alphanumeric display. Key name, display mode, tells you how it's going to use the key name and the prefix. So for this setup, I have immediate parameters selected, which means whenever I put pressure on the key, the prefix will appear before the, the number for how much pressure I'm putting on the key. So now that we've done all this, we can now save a preset that will save all of this data so that it can be recalled later. And here's how you do that. You click Save, and then you type in the preset name and select a preset number, replacing one that says unnamed, unless you want to replace one. So then you click Save, and now you have this in your list of presets ready to be recalled. So that's the modulation window. And now, after we've saved all of our keys how we want them, we can save a scene. And then we can also name our scene with the scene abbreviation. So check out how this scene is named Pressure Live because all the keys are set to pressure. And my scene abbreviation is visible on the alphanumeric display. So I can save that the same way I save a preset and now it's available in the scene list. Another cool thing you can do is use this thing called the set list to change the order that your scenes appear in if you wanted them to be in a different order than how they appear in the scene list. You can turn them on and off in the set list for later and then now they appear here in the order that you want to use them. Now that everything's in the order we want, we can scroll through scenes using the x-axis of the nav pad. All of the scenes appear in the same order that they are in the set list, and you can scroll through them all easily with the nav pad. When you change from scene to scene, 
the last thing you edited in that scene is remembered after you go back to it from another scene. I'm going to demonstrate that for you now by setting up the toggle preset so that all of the LEDs on the bottom are green and all the ones on the top are red. Now when I go back to the toggle preset it's going to be arranged the same way. Now I'm going to change one thing. I'm going to switch pad 3 to be red and now I'm going to go back to the toggle preset again and there it is, arranged the same way. This is incredibly useful for performance situations. So now I'm going to show you the nav pad modulation window, which is very, very similar to the key modulation windows. You can select the source, the parameter destination, which device it's being sent to, and all of that. So let's go back to the main window and take a look at all the ways you can control the pr presets for each key from there. You can save the presets from there. You can copy and paste from key to key. You can select which preset you want to use. You can save your scenes, make your set list. And that pretty much concludes my tutorial video for the basics of the SoftStep application. Hope you enjoy using the SoftStep as much as I do. Thanks!